What's up everybody, Dan here from Headwaters Kayak and we are in Redding, California today at Headwaters Adventure Company checking out these three boats that are all similarly priced, similar dimensions, but for very different purposes. So let's go have a look. So behind me we have three boats that you guys have asked me to compare many, many times in the comments section. We've got the Sea Stream Angler 120, the Moken 12.5 from Feel Free, and the Big Fish 120 from Three Waters Kayaks. They're all very, very similar boats. But let's start with the Angler 120. My goal is to kind of compare and contrast to show you guys what's the same, what's different, why does one cost more than the other, that sort of thing. The first kayak we're gonna look at is the Sea Stream Angler 120. This kayak is 12 foot, three inches long, 35 inches wide and has a whopping 450 pound capacity. This kayak was designed for a larger angler, somebody that's gonna be fishing flat water lakes, slow moving rivers. If you're smaller, there might be better boats for you. But let's start at the front, we'll work our way back through the boat and just talk about the details and then we'll compare it to the Moken 12.5 that we have next to us. On all the boats, you're gonna see big molded front carry handles. That is a character trait of all the things made from Feel Free Kayaks. Now I know I said this is a Sea Stream, but it's important to note that Sea Stream is owned by Feel Free, and so was Three Waters Kayaks. They're all manufactured in the same place. They have three different brands to kind of fill in three different parts of the market. The Sea Stream Angler is a little bit more simplified than the other two, so you're not gonna see as many features. Like the pod on this one is just a pod. It doesn't go through the boat, it just gives you little access for things you want access to. So if you wanted to throw some soft plastics in there, snacks, water, kind of whatever you want, you could just throw in there, but it doesn't go through the hole. The front hatch, it's got these simple closures. And this is one thing I really noticed difference between these two is these feel a little bit floppier, a little bit, you know, I guess chintzier. And as I open it up, see it's got a nice seal and then big access to the inside. I really like that they give you in-hole access. I think that's an important thing on kayaks. Moving back through the boats, you see a couple of these little eyebrow vents. What these are intended for is protecting your rods. So what a lot of people do is they put the butt of the rod in here and then they run the side of the pole along here. And on either side, you have little clips where you can clip your rods in if you wanna get them tucked down and out of the way or if you're transporting them in the bed of your truck. All three kayaks are gonna have the same adjustable foot pedals. They give you a bunch of different points of adjustment so you can find a good comfortable position for your legs to be in. You don't want your legs straight out, but you also don't want too much of a bend in your knee. And this boat is definitely designed for a larger person. We can put a Pretty tall person up here, up to I think about six foot five fits in this boat. Other little subtle details that you'll notice is a couple of tubes that poke out right here. Those run all the way back to the back of the kayak and are pre-installed hoses if you wanted to add a rudder. That means all you have to do if you wanna add a rudder is run the lines, switch out the foot pedals and drop the rudder pin in on the back. It's about a 15 minute install and this boat would take a rudder. Now I'm seeing a lot of stuff on the Sea Stream owners group of guys actually putting a motor off the back of this thing and using those same tubes for foot controls. So you have the motor, the controller here on the side, and then you use your feet for steering, which I think is a pretty cool way to go if you're gonna be using this kayak for bass fishing. Your intention's not necessarily for paddling. You know, a, a little trolley motor is a great way to go on a kayak this large. Uh, you'll see they do a big standing platform here on the Sea Stream. It's just a heavy duty plastic that's screwed into the deck. It's reinforced underneath but it is just plastic, it's a textured plastic. Whereas on some of the other boats, we'll see foam and a little bit more refinement. This is just a simple plastic deck. On either side of the seat, you see storage for Plano tackle boxes. And then you'll also see two super long tracks. These are the feel free uni tracks. So if you're wanting to run accessories, you will need like a little track adapter or you'll have to get the feel free uh, uni track pieces, which are like a little mount that clips onto this piece of track. On the seat itself, you have a high-low adjustment. Again, if your seat is low in a kayak, your center of gravity is low, you're gonna be more stable. When you lift the seat up to the high position, it's gonna feel more ergonomic, more comfortable, but it's gonna make you feel a little bit less stable. So when you get your new kayak, don't just jump in the high position, try it low, get used to the stability, and then lift it up high. The other thing when you go high is it's a little bit more challenging to paddle because you're reaching for the water. So oftentimes on a kayak that has a high low position seat, I'll recommend doing a little bit longer paddle. On the seats, we're basically looking at the same seat on all three of these boats. This is the perforated mesh seat. It's nice and wide, nice and tall, very comfortable seat. They've moved to this on almost all their kayaks over the past couple of years, and we've seen really good success. 
A uh, lot of people are very, very happy with the comfort of the seat. Behind the seat, we see a couple of flush mount rod holders and then a huge tank well, massive tank well. This kayak's widest point is at the hip, so that's what gives it all its stability. And then it kind of goes into a point at the front. So the back of it is real squared off. It's meant to take a load. It's kind of like a pickup truck where you can put a big guy, a ton of gear, a dog, a kid, and it's still gonna have great stability. It's got plenty of room for a crate. Even the big gigantic black pack fits back here, no problem. They happen to have one over here. Look at that, that's the big dog. This thing is gigantic. And it even fits sideways. If you wanna have rod holders on either side, you could add another three rod holders on this if you wanted to. Huge. You see it's got a little bungee system here in the back. And if you wanted to tie stuff down, you can do that with the bungee. Other things, it's got a little mesh handle. They do have a molded handle as well, but that's where the rudder pin goes. So if you wanted to add a rudder, you still have the ability to use this handle to carry the kayak. A couple of other things, we've got two side handles on either side, and then you see the paddle clip. So you can run your paddle here and then clips on the side. I'll be honest with you, on this particular boat, I think the paddle clip's in an awkward spot because your handle's here, that's sort of in the way. If your paddle was to go across here and clip on, it's not super clean or smooth. Whereas like on the Mokin or some of the others have a nice molded piece, like a little ledge to clip on. All right, let's go ahead and tilt this thing up and have a look at the hole. So super interesting hole design. It's kind of a tri-hole design. It's got these tracking grooves that run the whole length of the boat. You get sort of that singular keel entry, but then it balloons out into these two pontoons. So you get kind of the best of both worlds. It's a fairly efficient design for how big it is. I mean, it is 35 inches wide and it carries that width all the way into the stern. So it's not a rocket ship, but it cuts through the water pretty nicely. All in all at $8.99, it's an incredible value. It's definitely a boat that's easy to upgrade if you wanted to add a motor to it. But if you're looking for a stable fishing kayak and you're a bigger guy, this is a great way to go. It's a great place to start. Now the question becomes, why then would you buy a Feel Free Mokin 12.5? It's only 29 bucks more. This one's more capacity, more stable. But with the Feel Free, you do get a lot of additional upgrades. And the first thing I would say is probably because you're a little bit smaller person or maybe you're a little bit more active. You know, I've paddled both these boats, but I definitely tend to lean towards the Mokin 12.5 simply because it's a little bit sleeker on the water. The whole design is a little more rounded. It's a little bit more of a traditional sit on top kayak, but it's still plenty stable for a guy like me to stand up in. Seth actually rated this the best river fishing kayak for 2022. He found it to have the best blend of speed, maneuverability, it did well in the flats, it did well in the currents, it was easy to stand up in. And really, I think that's the deal with the Mogan. It's kind of a jack of all trades. It definitely works for the meat and potatoes of the market. They're really well made. And it's just sort of like an industry standard, a kind of a golden skew, I call it. Sometimes in the kayak industry, you find these boats that are just solid performers year after year after year. And that is what the Mokin 12.5 has been. And I really think they hit that price point just right. At around $900, it's sub thousand. It's not uber expensive, but you have a lot of the features that you'd find on a more expensive kayak, like the high-low chair, like the ability to add a rudder, like the sonar pod, uh, like the, the watertight front storage. So pretty cool boat. This kayak comes in at 12 foot six, 32 inches wide, so a little bit narrower. 85 pounds, but it still has a 400 pound capacity. Let's uh, we'll go ahead and start at the front. We'll work our way back again with the molded front handle. Same on all the boats. Additional rod storage that go flush along the sides of the boats. This has the twist lock front hatch with the three hinges and just feels much more solid. I almost wish if it's the same size, I almost wish they would just do this universally. But I guess it's one of the things that separates Feel Free from the other brands. Large storage hatch inside, which again, Seth could speak to on that video. He camped out of his. If you haven't already watched that, it's worth going back and checking out his review. Just really, really fun, uh, fun video, well shot. As we move ourselves back into the cockpit, again, you have adjustable foot pedals. Unlike the Seastream Angler 120, the cockpit is a little bit smaller. I'm 6'2", and I run this all the way to the end. So a little bit less capacity, a little bit more, a little bit less leg room kind of designed for a smaller paddler. Now I say smaller, I mean, it's relative with kayak fishing, but I'm 6'2", 220, it fits me great. Much taller than that and you're gonna feel crammed. So if you're questioning whether you fit or not, I highly recommend jumping in one, sitting in it before you make the purchase. In the cockpit here, it's a little smaller, but you see you still have a standing platform. This is foam reinforced with plexiglass underneath to kind of distribute the weight. All the tie down points on this boat are metal rods that are 
mold it into the boat so you don't have to worry about that breaking or causing you issues. Sonar pod is the standard feel-free sonar pod that they've been using now for a few years. It has the ability to add a fish finder on top. It's got a waterproof grommet for the power wire, for the transducer wire. The excess transducer wire gets coiled up and can slide right in the inside here. And then the transducer itself, the wire can pop out of this hole, right? And then the transducer gets mounted to the bottom. And now the nice thing about this is you have your whole system rigged up, your battery lives inside, and at the end of the day, this can go inside your truck and get locked away, tucked away. If you need to run into the store or something, it's not you know, permanently mounted to your boat. So other things I'm noticing is the track system on here is a little bit shorter, a little bit smaller. Standing platform, a little bit smaller. Rear tank well on this kayak is actually, it's still pretty long, but it's a quite a bit smaller than what we had on the Angler 120 or the Big Fish. You know, it's definitely more of a paddler's kayak that you can fish from. I've sold these a lot over the years just to recreational paddlers that wanted to do some occasional fishing, but they wanted to have a good paddling boat. This is a good one for that. It's got a crate buckle here. So if you wanted to add a smaller black pack, this wouldn't take the big one, but the smaller, the medium size, or Hobie crate, or feel free makes a really cool uh, canvas fish bag that fits right in here, matches the boat. A couple of flush mount rod holders and then a twist lock hatch in the back here. So it gives you lots of access to the inside of the boat, makes it easy for rigging. Also has two cup holders behind the chair. I thought that was a nice little touch. It was dead space, so why not? Behind that, you have more tank well space. If you wanted to add a fish bag, like I fish offshore on this and I have a nice fish bag that fits right in here and a little uh, bungee system if you wanted to put your dry bag with as well as additional track systems here for flags, lights, whatever you want. Another thing that's worth noting is they gave you big flat areas here and I've seen people run two, four, six, up to six rod holders on there if you wanted to. That was the original design concept with this. As we move to the back, you've got the pre-plumbed rudder system. So again, you can totally add a rudder to this boat. Super easy. Rudder pin. The handles on this are a little funny. You either hold the handle here or they have two molded in ones on either side for me to pick the boat up. The most important thing when you buy a feel free, what makes it slightly more expensive and so much more useful is a built-in wheel in the keel. There you go. So, I mean, it just makes it so you can pick up the front handle and roll this thing around. Obviously, it only works really on concrete or hard packed ground, but it is huge. Like even just getting the kayaks in here, wheeling them through the shop, as opposed to two people having to, you know, carry this one around, hold it, you just grab the front handle and kind of like roll it around, get it to where you want to go. So I really like that. As you guys know, if you've watched the channel, I've always been a fan of the Mokin 12.5. I think it's one of the better boats that Feel Free makes. Um, I think it's one of the gold standards in the industry. And if you buy this kayak, I do not think you'd be disappointed. I think you'd be real happy with it. Lastly, we have the Three Waters Big Fish 120. This is the largest boat of the bunch, the heaviest boat of the bunch coming in at 100 pounds. Overall length on this one is about 12 foot three. Width on it is again, 35 inches. So same as Angler 120. And it actually has a 400 pound capacity. And I kind of question that. So we keep these at our boathouse down in Lodi and we put a lot of people on the water and when we get a big person, this is the go-to boat. I wouldn't hesitate for a second to recommend this to a 400 pound paddler plus gear. It is a very, very stable platform and they get that through this unique tri-hole design. Three Waters calls it their cathedral hole design and it was meant to be uber stable yet still have some decent efficiency for a boat of its size. It really does cut through the water pretty good. You can see it's got these little pontoons on each side along with that center keel. So when we pick this thing up, a super unique hole design. It makes it really good for stability and decent for paddling. Up in the front, they do things a little bit different. They give you a tank well in the front. It has a couple of um, rod tip protectors here. The rods can go along the side of the boat. To me, it's a little awkward. I don't know too many people that use it for that, but I do know a lot of people that will put a battery up front a motor here in the center, rudder off the back. There is lots of cool ways to motorize this kayak. Um, again, on the Big Fish Owners Group, I, I like, for whatever reason, I like to go on Owners Groups because I see people doing stuff with kayaks that you normally otherwise wouldn't see. I see a lot of people that do a fixed motor here in the pod. They just take this pod out altogether, right? Battery, and then Yak Gadget makes a really cool mount that fits right inside with the clamp. And you just put the trolling motor right down the center. The battery can go in the front and then you just run a rudder off the back and again it's got pre-plumbed holes that you can steer that from your cockpit 
Or if you wanted to have a steerable trolling motor, there's no reason you couldn't do that as well. So just a lot of really cool options to motorize this boat if you wanted to. It also has the same gasket deal. So if you wanted to add a fish finder to the top, real easy to do so. Put your battery inside. It's not as refined as the Feel Free, but it is a little bit larger. So it'll fit a little bit larger battery. It also just makes a great hatch if you're not wanting to do anything and you just want to add stuff into there. It makes a great hatch with lots of room. As we move back into the cockpit, you see the same adjustable foot pedals as you've seen on the other kayaks. Again with the uni track on either side, so lots of room for mounting stuff to the boat. It's got a cup holder, big massive standing platform. Again, this one uses the plastic standing platform as opposed to the feel free, which tends to use foam. That's what kind of makes this a little bit lower level kayak than say like a Lure 11.5. Similar stability, maybe a little faster, but overall this is a little bit less expensive, more basic kayak than the Lure series. So it kind of, kind of lives in between the Mokin and the Lure. Paddle storage on this boat is fairly similar to the Mokin. It's got paddle storage on either side with a little shelf. You just clip the paddle in here. It's got one on both sides. The seat, now I gotta say, I opened this up today and I forgot this was from last season. This was one I had in the warehouse. I have been saving this boat for like, I don't know, about seven or eight months in order to do this video. And since then, they've gone to a new seat back. The seat back is actually the same as what the Seastream has or what the Mokin has on it. So I'm sorry, this is slightly obsolete, but if you could just imagine this seat on this boat, that's what you're getting. The cool thing about this seat, the unique thing, is not only does it have a high-low position, low position, slightly reclined position, but it also has the ability to just flip the seat up all together, and you have a couple of straps here that you can take this and tighten it down and give yourself like a little leaning platform if you wanted it. Tighten that down there, and now you can just lean up against that. And now you have this huge standing area. So people that really like to stand up and fish out of their kayaks, this gives you a big sandy platform. It also puts you in the widest part of the boat. I don't have any problem. I still feel like I have plenty of deck space with the seat up. So I typically don't mess with these. I just run it in the high position. And look, you still have pretty good amount of room to stand in. In the tank well, we have another large size tank well, additional tracks in the back, two flush mount rod holders, a couple of D rings, three of them throughout the tank well to strap down to cinch down to. It also has bungee in the back. So similar to the Mokin in that regard, just a little bit larger. Let's give it the old black pack test. Cause this crate, se this tank well seems large, but it doesn't seem quite as large as the Sea Stream. But it does indeed fit the largest size black pack. It just wouldn't fit it sideways with the rod holders. So the rod holders would be orientated this way. And on the back of this boat, they don't give you wheel in the keel, but they do give you a nice big replaceable skid plate. And that actually goes for the same on the Sea Stream Angler. So these two boats, the Big Fish 120 and the Sea Stream Angler are real similar in a lot of ways. They fit a bigger person. They are very easy to stand up in, very stable. The Angler 120, that one comes in at $899 and you know, has a little bit more simplified deck. The Big Fish 120 comes in at $1,099 but has a lot more features and creature comforts and probably a little bit thicker plastic too because it is 100 pounds and it just feels a little bit more stout. So I realize I didn't talk a whole lot about the differences in hull designs here, but that's really where the biggest difference between these two boats is. If you're more of a paddler, I think the Mokin 12.5 is probably right for you. If you're gonna do occasional fishing, great. If you're a bigger guy or you just want the most stability or you're gonna be motorizing it and bringing lots of stuff, then I would probably lean towards the Three Waters or the Angler 120. Um, let me just lift up the hole in this Mokin 12.5 and try to show you guys the difference. You see how it's a little bit more rounded off? It still has tracking grooves throughout the boat, but a little bit sharper entry, a little bit more rounded profile. So it's gonna wanna rock and roll a little bit more, but that's what makes it maneuverable and kind of uh, edgy and fun in the currents. Whereas the big fish here has a lot more width, a lot more stability, but it's gonna be a lot more grabby in the river. It's not meant for ripping through currents. It's meant for flat water. It's meant for, you know, calm lakes, ponds, that sort of thing. So anyways, you guys, you've got some options ahead of you. If you have any more questions that I didn't cover, I'm more than happy to address those in the comments. I believe there's a review of each one of these kayaks on the channel. So if you want additional information, go check out those videos. And thanks so much for watching. Until next time, this is Dan wishing you happy paddling. We'll see you on the next one.